Virginia Landscape Architecture Studio in Ag Hall, where all the creativity happens. And joining me is Professor Cheryl Mahako. Professor, we've talked about the renovation of the rock garden to a hardy succulent garden. But if I looked at that space, I would be lost. So tell us a little bit about the design process and how you get started. Right, so um, we did look at the space and we saw that, that it had been previously used as a rock garden. So mm -hmm. we know it gets a lot of great sunshine. Um, it's on a slope, it gets good drainage. So with climate change, with a lot of new interest in cactus and really cold, hardy cactus and succulent, um, we made a decision to go in with a collection. So um, we've been working on that. We've done some site demo. And so now it was time to begin to get a plan. So. What I did was go out and try to get something as built, just really sketchy, sort of some of the major rocks, some of the existing plant material. There's some wonderful yellow yucca that we'll, we'll keep. Um, other than that, the only real goal that's important is to kind of screen off what really is this nice little Japanese garden. So we'll do some planting to kind of screen that off and really, really work with this area. Okay. So in terms of the plant material, just beginning to think about overall shape, overall masses, the plant material that we'd be working with. Here's kind of a general plant. So um, the stickiest and prickliest ones, are, of course, these wonderful choya and apuntias. Apuntias are the big paddle cactus, and there's a lot of them that are cold hardy. So we'll sort of try those in the center here. So they're away from the public. Yeah, public. right, not yeah. so much on the edge. This. Um, area that's up towards the top, we want, to, we want to put a lot of really nice bright color that'll be eye-catching as you walk up to it. So those will be some of the um, Hesperella, which is the red yucca. Okay. And then there's actually a wonderful little cultivar mm -hmm. called Stoplight. Okay. Um, that's also a deeper red Hesperella. And then mix that in with some of the um, Nymphomia. Which, which is the red hot poker plant? Right, okay. yeah. And we have some beautiful yellow ones as well as red for okay. this area. So if you kind of use the color as sort yeah, of your... Yeah, this is kind of what... Okay. There's a lot of beautiful pale greens. Here's this kind of um, reddish color, uh, a bit of yellow up here. And then in this area, um, we want to get close enough to really see them because a lot of them are quite small. Um, they're more of the barrel mam mammillaria or the echinoceras, which is very much something like this. They okay. have a, a beautiful bloom, a bright, bright bloom, but you know, the rest of the year they're just kind of um, there, not really eye grabbing. And so they're a little closer so you can appreciate the detail of them? Yeah, and we don't usually mask those. They're harder to find. We don't have as many. We hope that they, ex you know, uh, expand but um, yeah those will be in there and then on the edge uh, again a little bit of safety but also lower so that it doesn't block the plant material in the center again this will be really built up because of the importance of drainage um, quite a bit of the semper biome which is the hen and chicks okay so just sort of basic basic thinking and then the next stage is beginning to actually think about um, specific color, specific layout, um, what those will be. So this is just an, you know, a quick one-time generation beyond this okay. plant. Right. And here it looks like you maybe incorporated some of the texture of the plant. Right, a those are like pads, yeah. mm -hmm. and then the rocks are running through. These are the memarias, and then um, this beautiful red yucca. So further help you visualize what it might look like. Mm -hmm. okay. right. And so in addition to this, we're working on um, finding plant material, collecting plant material. We have about half of what we need now. It's mm -hmm. stored away in the greenhouse. Um, and, and how do you, let me interrupt you, how do you figure out how much you might need? So you kind of know your space, right? And then you know the spacing of the plants? You do, and you, um, you know, it's really all over the board. Sometimes it's because of budget. You want it to be really full, <laughs> really quick, and then you edit out. Of course, with the, the cactus, it's really great to propagate from them. So you can plant full, and if it gets a little too crowded, you just really go and propagate away from that. Um, so yeah, it's a combination of allowing it to grow some um, and really just experience. Okay. I've done a lot of this. Okay. <laughs> you are a professional. <laughs> so in addition to this, uh, put installing the garden, over time here, we will um, have available on the website um, individual plants. They'll be coded so you could look them up. But we are developing a nice little booklet that tells you the native range. It gives you a picture of the flower and the fruit. So hopefully that'll be really useful to Oklahoma 
gardeners that really want to try and move in this direction for their garden. Well, this is going to be a valuable resource, and the fact that we'll have a display garden to kind of accompany that educational material will be fantastic. Thank you for walking us through this process. You're welcome. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.